China, the great investment opportunity and dominating economy, has seen its currency dropping and its stock market fall apart. How much should China and the rest of the world panic? With me now is Philip Uglo, MNI Indicator's chief economist, to find out. Well, Philip, looking at your MNI China business sentiment report, it looks like it's on the decline, no? The July version of the report certainly did show a fall, and that was mainly due to the fall in the stock market that we saw in July. And that saw the indicator dropping below 50, That means firms are less optimistic about the future. But what we saw in August was a bounce back, quite a noticeable bounce back really. And I think if we discount that July fall and put that down to a knee jerk reaction to what's going on in the Chinese stock market at that moment, then actually underlying businesses are looking a little bit better than other people think. Particularly we see new orders and production pick up quite sharply in August. And what does Black Monday add to this equation? Over the past few days we've seen uh, the uh, Shanghai Stock Exchange falling very dramatically. That's mainly been driven by the decision to devalue the yuan. Yes, we've seen that spill over into global markets. and I think they've overreacted slightly to what's going on in China. We've seen the Dow down, the DAX down, the FTSE down. But really the, the Chinese market is a bit of a different beast. It's been up a lot this year. It was up nearly 50% at one point. Now it's back down and, and we're actually back down below the level we saw at the start of the year. Quite an incredible journey really for a stock market. But that underlies, I think, the difference in the type of market we're dealing with here. It's it's not a market that is tracking the fundamentals of the Chinese economy, for instance. So in terms of strength compared to other major economies, how does China stand now? It's still a very strong economy. I mean, we're still growing in terms of absolute growth rates. China's growing at 7% a year, maybe a little bit lower, depends if you dispute the official GDP data. But that's certainly a lot stronger than, say, the US economy, which is growing at about 2.5%, or the UK economy, which is one of the fastest growing economies in the G7 at the moment. The problem is, when China does have a bit of a growth slowdown as it is at the moment, it only needs to slow a little bit and that does have quite a dramatic impact on its trading partners. Where would you say are the lesser known trouble spots or bubbles? Is there anything on the horizon? We've got the stock market, we've got the housing market, we've got local government debt. Maybe if I turn the question on its head, I would sort of say, well, maybe a bubble that has kind of gone a little bit or something that's a little bit better in China is the housing market. And that's something that people haven't been talking about too much. But the data over the last you know, eight months or so since the start of the year has been a lot better in this area of the economy. Um, We've seen prices starting to rise in certain cities. We've got housing sales up around about 33% year on year. There's still a bit of an issue with housing starts on the new home sales front. But overall, that's a little pocket of green, if you like, rather than all these other large pockets of red that people are flagging at the moment. How is China impacting global markets? We've had this very sharp fall in the in the Shanghai stock stock market and also on the Shenzhen stock market. So it's had this very large knock-on effect to other global equity markets. We've seen the DAX down, as I say, the Dow down, the FTSE down as well. It's off the back of this decision to the authorities to devalue the Chinese currency, the yuan. And that's really had a, a couple of effects. I think people have, A, they're concerned that maybe that devaluation could go further. The other issue is that just by devaluing the currency, that seems to have sent a panic signal around the world. It's a sort of a, what does the China Central Bank know that we don't know? And, and so that sent markets into a bit of a tailspin. I'm not so sure that anything in the fundamentals of China has really changed very much over the last couple of months. I think there's a lot of concentration on the very negative side, the hard landing in China. And I, I'm not sure there's anything new that's really come into the picture. From an international perspective, I think some of the panic is also coupled with the fact that, yes, we're seeing China slow down a bit. Yes, we're seeing a kind of a rout in commodity markets, equity markets. There's also this fear that the Fed are also going to take the plunge and raise rates either in September or later this year. So you do think that China is still an investment opportunity? It still has great growth potential. It's still growing very strongly, in particular in the consumer sector. I think over the years what we've seen in China is we've seen China try to wean itself off of the investment-led growth that it's had in the past and move towards a more of a consumer type society and I think in part you see that in some of the data coming through. So I think there's there's big opportunities in those consumer markets. I mean if you're a large global company, they're all of course in China. They're looking for opportunities of where to expand and it's it's going to be a massive market still.